I'm Janine Cutleroff. I'm the CEO of Oink Interactive. Uh, we make gesture rec recognition technology uh, designed to work on 3D cameras, so depth sensing cameras. And what we're showing today is our uh, our solution for close range applications geared towards PCs and eventually tablets and mobile devices as well. Um, what we do is we build the core algorithms that understand the hands, 22 joints of each hand and how they move in a free uh, um, in a free space. And Eliel Haddad is sitting with me and he's going he's the head of our usability studio and he's going to be showing some of the use cases that are we find very compelling to touch the consumers and to really start to seed the market for what types of experiences these close range up with these close range technology will deliver to the market. So with no further ado, we'll start with something very fun and um, um, eye-catching, which we've designed. It's a sort of augmented reality-ish uh, demonstration where there's a virtual elastic band, as you see, and there's a, several points on each hand which are being identified. Ellie is working in a comfortably in a 3D space, so it really already differentiates sort of between what you can do in a two with a two-dimensional technology and uh, uh, the depth data that we're getting. And of course, the movements of his hand are also controlling the music, and it's a combination of just fun effects, sound, visual. And he starts again. Now the core, one, one of the things that we're seeing in the marketplace is that Windows 8 has really been a key driver to try to get this technology in market. Why? Um, Windows 8 has obviously been built on touch, uh, a touch interface. And on larger screens, touch hasn't really been uh, practical yet, a lot because of the cost and other issues like functionality. If you're very far from the screen, so it's not necessarily so comfortable to be touching that screen. So now you have pressure to get Windows 8 into the general marketplace and, um, and, a, and a problem that it's not yet, um, that touch hasn't yet been adopted. So one of the mo more basic things that we've done yet we think is very compelling is taking Windows 8 and um, overridden the touch screen by putting on gesture. So that's what Ellie's going to demo here. You can go ahead and talk us through it. Okay, this is how I <coughs> deal with Windows 8. I can uh, go to the start screen and go back to the desktop by a simple gesture, wave gesture. I can uh, use the cursor, just like I'm using a mouse. I can pinch to do a click, or I can even do uh, touch-like behavior, um, like touching the screen. You can use this panoramic picture, view this panoramic picture, as if I'm using a touch screen. For example, I can zoom out. Or zoom in. And also play Fruit Ninja, like everybody else. The great thing about Fruit Ninja is, is the two things, actually. The response time that you're seeing, extremely responsive. And notice how Ellie doesn't really move his hand. He simply points in the direction that he's interested in, in, um, in interacting with, which already makes it a much more comfortable use case. And, it under, and, and we understand how people want to interact. And that's not by broad movements. It's by very fine, detailed movements. And if Ellie puts up all five fingers, then you have your cheat mode of Fruit Ninja. <laughs> so very responsive, very fun, very nice. Moving right along, I think we should actually go out of Win 8 and, um, and show what we've thought of. So, you know, there's, there's, there's obviously Windows 8 is a, is a great user interface for touch and for gesture. Um, but when we think about gesture, you start to think about, wow, now you're not confined by the boundaries of a, of, of a 2D screen. How, how do you start taking that thought process beyond? So at the most basic level, we, so we've designed a, a first generation UI experience where we thought about people's natural moments, movements and how to interact in, in a more um, um, uh, broad playing field. So for example, one of the things that I'll show you is simply the natural movements of, per, of a person's hand typically moves in a more of a circular arch movement. So instead of the icons like in Windows in Metro, which are more of a grid, They've designed the icons to naturally flow with the movements of his hand. Now, if Ellie will go into an application like his book content collection, he has a bookshelf, which is designed like a typical bookshelf, but he can move in closer. He can 
go further back, and he can interact with his books by the way you would interact. You'd pick up a book, and usually when you pick up a book, what do you do? Well, you look at the back. You can pick up two books and compare them. And then he can choose to pick up a book and actually read it. The way you would think about reading a book, you'd open it, and you'd flip pages. Very natural, very intuitive ways to deal with your content. He can do the same thing for a music collection. So you can imagine someone is typing on a keyboard because that's a very functional use case for a PC, and then they want to play some music. So they simply raise their arm and they're interacting in a in in their three D playing field. And you see, it's very fine movements, very responsive. And this is an this is an example of of what might sit on top of Windows 8 to complement it um, as a first as a next generation UI experience. Beyond this, we started thinking of creative use cases where someone might want to, um, um, again, interact with a 3D space with 3D modeling software. So here's our, uh, uh, here's our take at clay modeling. We have not released our beta, so this is really some free beta software uh, meant to, again, give ideas of how this technology is going to find its way into the market. How we can pinch, how we can make shapes by pushing, he can make it symmetrical mode. <coughs> he can exercise all his greatest artistic ability. Or not. Or not. <laughs> I think he's beautiful. And angry. <laughs> And finally, we'll show you just uh, one of the things that we do is um, it's, we don't just provide an SDK with the technology that I described earlier. I'm sorry, we don't just provide the technology, the, the 22 points. We also provide the complete framework that a developer would need to take the technology and actually put and actually develop an application on top of it. So the Unity plugs in, the tools, the, the C-sharp wrappers, all of the things that would be functional. So Ellie and his studio, as the, um, as, as the, from the user's perspective, they took our SDK and Ellie said, you know, let me, let me work with our SDK as a developer that knows you know, nothing more than I, I, I develop applications and see how, how easy it is to develop a game. So this was a test game that he did, and, or a test application, and he put this together in just a few days. We like we think it's fun. So each one of his fingers controls a limb, his middle finger controls the head, and we've got marionettes.